Leitner is joining us on the phone. Oh, Teddy Ballgame, how are you, sir? Paul, how's things? <laughs> Ted. Anything new? Anything happening? Anything uh, go around town? Uh, that, uh, just, you want to talk about? Well, yeah, I think we should be talking about this basketball team because if, if oh, you yeah. recall the last time you and I spoke, which you've been so gracious with your time, so thank you, thank you, a thousand thank yous. But the last time we spoke, you said uh, beating Alabama would be the biggest basketball victory in, in school history. Would you like to amend that now? <laughs> you know, it's interesting because beating Alabama was a more difficult feat because they're a much better team than Creighton. But in terms of the import of what beating Creighton means, then you're talking about going to the Final Four. So as, as, as big as the Alabama thing, because they never, ever had, had uh, you know, beaten the number one team ever in, in basketball. And now suddenly, you know, they do. So that was the biggest, but it didn't last that long. Just the next one obviously took them to the uh, to the final four and uh, they've never been there never been to the elite eight now they've been there now it's to the final four i mean it's just one thing after another and and, it, and i've seen this i've seen it with the world series in 84 i saw it in 98 other playoffs for the padres including last year was unbelievable because it happened to be the dodgers they were beating and doing it at petco and, and I've seen it when the Chargers in the 94 season went to the 95 Super Bowl. Nothing brings a community together. Yes, yeah, Nothing. Like a winning sports team. And we're having that experience now with the San Diego State Aztecs. Speak to that phenomenon, Ted, because suddenly political differences don't mind. The, you know, nope. the, the noise from the neighbor late at night doesn't. All that suddenly goes out the window when you have a common love of a sports team. It is something that, as a young broadcaster, I would make fun of, and, and I was wrong as I you know, grew up and matured to become a person. <laughs> it's, I, I saw, going through those experiences, what it does. Color, religion, ethnic backgrounds, nothing. Neighborhoods, location, geography, nothing. And the truth of the matter is, the only thing that brings communities together normally are earthquakes and yeah. mudslides and, and hurricanes yes. and tornadoes and all sorts of disasters that make people you know get together and help each other, help build your house and, and, and give you shelter because your house is gone kind of a thing. That does it. The only positive way, positive way, without loss of life or property, is a winning sports team. And San Diego State, pick them out. You are on center stage. I don't mean it's a small stage in San Diego. I mean the national stage. It is absolutely magnificent. Enjoy every second of it. Well, well, for years now, you've been talking about this program being a national program, but you didn't quite have the resume to back that up. That that ends now, right? I mean, this is a bona fide national basketball program. Yeah, you know, what, what's used against them, I think, a lot is, uh, you know, the, the big conferences, East Coast bias for basketball, and, and the, that exists. It really does. And so you have the Big East, and you have the ACC, and the SEC, and the Big Ten, the Pac-12 back then, not now. And it was always Mountain West. Oh, please, these right. guys play in the Mountain West. Well, I got something to tell you. I used to say the very same thing. The Mountain West, the last two years, has been really, really tough by Ken Palm, which rates basically every metric and every analytic and number available, says it's the number five best conference in the entire country. Now, that is saying something. And if Wyoming had their big guy, Graham Ike, uh, who was out for the year, they would have been right up there with Boise State and the Aztecs and the rest of them. So a lot of that bias against the Aztecs is, you know, if they played, and maybe they will real soon in the Pac-12 or the Big 12, that will change. But they've won. They win 20 games every year. They go to their own tournament championship. They go to the championship game itself. But that doesn't impress Midwest and Eastern writers and broadcasters. This, this, when you're on CBS and you're right. of the four, there's like 332 teams play college basketball in this country. The best four are going to the final four. San Diego State is one of them. You can't this that in any way, shape, or form. Uh, Mr. Leitner, allow me two more questions, sir. Uh, you've been around. Your voice is attached to to most of the big sports moments here in San Diego. I'll, I'll, I'll get to that question in a moment. But right now, what would rock this town more? An NC2A championship basketball crown or a Padres World Series ring? Wow, that's difficult. It really is. And I don't know the demographics and I don't know the numbers in terms of overall 
Aztec fans, whether that be football or what we're talking about here, basketball. So I really don't know how many people we're talking about within the city, within the county, outside the campus. When the Padres, you know, who are going to do three million and almost did last year, three million in attendance, I think there are more Padre fans than Aztec fans. I think when something like this happens, a lot of people and they want to jump on the bandwagon. Hey, you're more than more than invited to jump on the Aztec bandwagon anytime. But they haven't been go, going to all the games, season ticket holders, and so forth. I think the Padres have so much more in terms of being a major league baseball team that I think I think a World Series championship would be bigger than the NCAA basketball championship, but you'll take either one. (laughs) I think have to have the idea in their mind and and quite right that they might have both. Yeah. I was just going to say both in 2023. And that's not stupid talk. Yeah. How about a Haley's comment? Well, that would be, geez, after all the hardships we've had to endure, which ends, leads me to my last question, Teddy, before before I came here, I knew of you, and, bef- and, and then when I got to work here in San Diego, I heard your voice, and every sports moment, your voice is somewhere around it. <laughs> you, when we're all said and gone, and we're all dust in, on the ground, your voice will live on for, for a generation upon generation, because your voice is attached to all these big moments. F- individually, well, or personally, what does that mean to you? I can't begin to tell you, and, and I'm not that good with words, that's for sure. It has become that later in my life as I've been here longer and gotten older and my 28th year with the Aztec football and basketball finished my first year, 41 years with the Padres. The comments that I get, and I get them from Aztec fans at the best basketball games away and the football games away, it means so much to me when people tell me that. I had a guy in Albuquerque tell me when the Aztecs played there whatever a month ago, and he said, you know what, I used to listen to the Padres and the Aztecs with my dad He's gone now. When I hear your voice, I get tears in my eyes thinking of my dad and the the bonding we had together, listening to you and then listening to Jerry Coleman and you before that and listening to the Aztecs. You can't buy that. You can't buy that. I love my work. I love play-by-play especially. I love studio work. But the impact that you have when you don't know that, that you mean something to someone, and you're just a broadcaster. You're not a Marine. You're not a police officer. You're not a a cancer researcher or a doctor. You're just a broadcaster, and I understand that. And I've never said I'm a great broadcaster. I'm a lucky broadcaster. And this latest, latest amazing step by the Aztecs is another example of how lucky I really am. Well, if you won't say it, then I will. You are a great broadcaster, and I'm honored to be in your orbit. And I appreciate you so much for making time for TEDUSI. You've been very good to me. Even though the well, first time you wouldn't give me the time of day when I first went up to introduce myself. You, you told me that. <laughs> you big time me on, on the football field you in told, Las Vegas. You told me that, and I don't remember the conversation. You looked but, at your uh, watch while I was introducing myself. <laughs> <laughs> when you're introducing yourself and the guy says, Naps, about uh, time. Son, it's 3.30. Really you, time. You get, all right, Teddy, uh, well, I'll let you get back to your appointed rounds, and uh, m- maybe we can do this one more time before it's all said and done. And, and, and maybe a couple because, you know, you got a game on Saturday. And oh. if you win that, you have a game on April 3rd for the national championship. Paul, what? Allie, thank you guys. Great talking to you. God bless, Teddy. Thanks, Talk to you later. Ted. You bet. Oh.